If you have one of these machines, check it out and make sure that you've got lock nuts on the track tensioners. Yeah. Welcome to the PFO channel. I'm Jim. Well, I knew that buying one of these things was going to give me a lot of opportunity for tinkering out here in the workshop. And I knew it would start as soon as I backed the thing off the trailer. One of our viewers saw our last video and they commented that they have the same make and model, an AGT LH12R, and they were having a hard time keeping the tracks on. And they found out that the track tensioner adjustment doesn't have a lock nut on it. So he asked me if I would look into that on this and see if I can figure out what size the lock nuts are on my track tensioners and let him know so that he can go try to find some to add to his machine. And by the way, I love the fact that one of the viewers felt comfortable to ask me a question like that. Hey, can you do me a favor and check this out or check that out? If there's something like that that you'd like me to have a look at on this thing, feel free to comment below. All right, let's get down on the shop floor and see if we can figure out how big those jam nuts are. I'm gonna open this up and see what we got. These look like a 10 millimeter. there is the tensioner and well wouldn't you know look at that my tensioners also are lacking a nut and I don't know if this is missed during assembly or if they just decided on this model they don't need a lock nut but this this right here is the tensioner adjustment for the tracks and it really seems like there ought to be a lock nut on there. So I'm going to see if I can figure out what thread that is. All right, I've got a dial caliper here. Um, need to zero it out first. Okay, we're getting a good zero. Uh, now this is going to be a little bit tricky because I'm sure these are going to be metric and this is only reading in inches. But what we got to do is first try to get as close as we can to the, the diameter and we don't want to be dropping down between any of the threads. We want to try to catch the high points of the th threads on both sides and to do that sometimes it's easiest to put the caliper at a, an angle so that you're going across i've got what seems like a pretty decent dimension of the outside diameter of those threads and that is looks like it's 0.925 inches Write that down, 0.925 inches. And now I'm going to use this back side here. This is going to be a really rough approximation, but I'm going to try to get that in there and line that up best I can with the distance from one thread to the next. Because the way that these threads are going to be specified is going to be uh, an M for metric and then a, a number that indicates the diameter and then the next number indicates the thread pitch. All right, this is going to be tricky because I can't get sideways. What if I can stick that up in there? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to use this front end instead of the... Oh, that is going to be tricky to get that in there. Oh, that's going to be about it right there. And that is looking like it's not quite to the one out here on the end, so it looks like it's not 0.1, so it's 0 
one point zero eight one. Now I gotta convert that by multiplying both of those numbers times twenty five point four to get millimeters. And I need the I need the calculator on my phone, which is also my camera here. So let me stop this. For so I ran this through my calculator and uh, doing the conversion of multiplying inches times 25.4 to give you millimeter equivalent. And so my 0.925 inch diameter comes out to 23.495 millimeters. And best I can line up that thread, uh, that's an eight. Uh, 0 0.081 inches comes out to just over two millimeters on the thread pitch. So what I'm going to look for is an M24 by 2.0 millimeter nut and see if I can find one of those or a couple of them. Order them up and see if they fit. And I'll check back with you when they come in. All right, I searched the internet and I found a pair of nuts that are the M24 by two millimeter thread pitch. So they happen to be stainless steel. I'm pretty happy about that. Um, so let's crack them open and see if they fit. That's fitting. That's the one right there. All right. It's pretty amazing that Amazon had these nuts. Let me find a wrench. I don't have a metric wrench that big in my toolkit. I guess that'll be the next thing I need to get. But uh, here's the big adjustable wrench. And that barely gets in there. I have to flop the wrench to get in there. Okay, that's snug. There it is. All right, well, this came in a pack of two, so I've got one for the other side, but I won't bore you with watching me do the same thing over on that side. Uh, now that I know that these fit, I'll go ahead and leave a link below in case you also have an AGT LH12R excavator that is missing the lock nuts on the track tensioners. I am an Amazon affiliate, so as an associate, I may earn a small commission if you use the links provided here, but there's no added cost to you. If you have some other maker model or even some other model of AGT, I don't know whether or not these are going to fit your track tensioners, uh, but you can use the process that I showed you here to figure out what the thread diameter and the thread pitch might be on yours and uh, order accordingly. Shout out to the viewer who tipped me off to this. I thought I was just doing him a favor. It turns out I was doing both of us a favor because I was also missing the lock nuts on my track tensioners. So he probably saved me from a load of work uh, that would come with throwing a track for the first time. I'm sure I'll throw a track eventually, but it won't be because I don't have lock nuts on my track tensioners now. So thank you very much. As I get to know this machine and uh, use it more, I'm sure I'm going to find more things that I need to upgrade or repair or in some cases maybe complete the assembly process here in my own workshop that should have happened in a factory somewhere on the other side of the world. You never know. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep the channel out.